Hey guys, just want to do a quick run through on my little fry pattern that I've been posting lately. Uh, it's a great one for imitating fry all over the world, but especially use this back home in BC for imitating migrating sockeye fry uh, or coho fry, whichever, depending on the area you're fishing in. But uh, just going to walk you through it here. I'm tying on a, a Mustad R74 size 8, so that's a 4 extra long size 8 streamer hook. Um, and just using olive thread really, you guys will specify what exact thread you're using, it doesn't really matter. Olive thread works. Um, I'm going to use Peacock Crystal Flash for the tail and the back of this fly. I'm just going to measure that against the gape of the hook and get about a, just a rough gape. I'm actually just going to trim this. You can also use um, natural materials. I usually often use uh, Marabou as well for the tail and back of this fly and uh, that works great as well. But if you want to do that, then you want to kind of keep the natural fibers for the tail and um, not trim them. But the flash obviously is synthetic, easy to trim, no natural tips, so I'm going to do that. So I'm just going to tie that in like that. I'm going to just double it back, just give it a few wraps. Three or four is more than enough. And then for the body, we're going to use a pearl diamond braid. This is a natural, or I guess it's pearl colored, pearl diamond braid. Um, I just find that it's funny on the package, it says dyed pearl diamond braid. Pearl. So, I don't know. I don't know if they dye this pearl or leave it natural. So, just tie that in like so. Move the thread to the front. I'm using a Norvice, that's why I'm doing the half hitch and setting my bobbin on the bobbin rest. As I wrap this, this um, braid, I want to pull it tight so it wraps a little uh, tighter around that lump where the thread was, where I tied the flash back. Um, and then now I'm going to let, let off a little bit so it, it keeps more even bulk as I go up to the eye of the hook here. And I'm just going to tie that off right against the eye. that and then we're going to take that flash back and just pull it right over top and I like to hold that with my right hand take my left hand and just go back over the fly again there so that that flash is now just a back on that fly Two wraps and then trim that as close as you can without cutting your thread and then simply whip finish I always like to do two whip finishes on most flies I tie. So that's that's the tying part of this fly. It's super simple. Um, you can trim the tail now or later. I know I want to go there, so I'll just trim it now. So that's that's most of this fly already. So the last uh, step here, quick, is just to super glue some eyes on. itself shut there. Just a bit of a drop on each side. And these are just basic stick-on eyes I'm going to put on here. You can get domed eyes. There's so many different kinds of eyes on the market now, but these are the, about the most basic ones you can get. Once they're in position, just like to squeeze gently, slowly at first, so I make sure I'm not super gluing um, the eyes to my finger. And then as yeah, they kind of go on, I'll just keep squeezing them on. Another thing I have done as well with these is I've noticed that the color, for example, on this one, you can see that the color of the eye has come off on my fingers. Um, and so what I'll often do is when that happens, I'll just take a black Sharpie marker or black uh, whatever brand marker you call it. 
and um, just touch the eye just really quick you can see it's solid again I do think it makes a big difference when you have fish that are keying in on other fish and eye is very important and then the last part of this fly is just to use a either a UV resin or a hard um, what you call it Sally Hansen hard as nails or any other kind of uh, glue or resin on the back of the fly and then around the eyes as well so I'm using a, a Deer Creek uh, diamond hard UV resin so I just go on the eye around the head and between the eyes on the bottom I like to kind of fill that gap in this just helps with the fly with durability uh, but also as well as the look of the fly so I'll just rotate that as I zap it with the laser here. So I'll do that much, and then I'll do the back. And again, this is more just for, for durability and, and the presentation of the fly. What I find for myself, durability is always something I look at when time flies, especially for my clients. Um, how can I make that fly last? Uh, as long as possible and also you know give the get the best value for money and time out of tying or what I'm selling to my clients so that's about it that's super simple super easy and super effective and um, you know that's that's the simple one nice and easy little front tie